All right, let's start the meeting. Uh, the meeting is being recorded by Area 58, and you can view it on YouTube. Uh, we got Steve, Kim, Kathy, myself, and Peggy. Uh, first thing on the agenda is notice of a 10 for 22 Home Street. Mr. Bud. I'm Joe Webby, Webby Engineering. Uh, with me is John Burris. And what John would like to do uh, is, is his house currently is right here with that barn and been quickly in my plans. Uh, he would like to demolish his existing dwelling and build a, a larger building basically on the hill. Uh, when we were here the last meeting and discussed about uh, armoring the wall, uh, excuse me, armoring the bank. Uh, there, was, there was a block wall. Uh, we have since done that on this plan. Uh, this, this wall will be approximately two and a half feet high uh, with blocks, uh, the big, big blocks uh, that will be on it all along the, the bank. Um, uh, with most of the hearing we had finished, we had explained what we were trying to do there to keep the septic system well beyond 100 feet. Uh, we also have the 50 foot line that does all right through that area, but we have no other place on the lot to build a house other than where it is now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if John wants to say anything else. Mm -hmm. right, I'll go after discussion with the board. Yeah, right. my only concern is that the building is about three times the size of the original. And it's disturbing three times the amount of the football is on. More than yeah. half of it is past the 50 foot line, too. So that's my own concern. Is I know we usually, as a rule, will allow people to rebuild on the footprint, but this seems to be just extending it a bit much. The um, Steve had just said that it more than 50 percent when we went the building itself in the, the back isn't disturbing more than 50% within the 50 foot wetland. It's o he's only out about 20% more than the original. And there was already a concrete patio and other stuff back there when we did the site visit. Um, so he's really not disturbing a whole lot. He's just taking out the patio and other such features that are already there and putting in a dwelling. I think, uh, you know, if I may also, Kim, is part of this is a garage. I know it's still a dwelling. It's still yeah. right. But this part is a garage. And and because in his garage had to go over to that half because the septic's out front per the Board of Health, and he's also taking out his old septic, old leaching field, out of the neighbors, so there won't be problems for the neighbor when she passes on her home and when he goes to sell his home. And the abutting neighbor was here at the last meeting in support of the project and very grateful to John for doing all the extra work with the extra cost. And then when we had asked him to redesign, it was because Mr. Webby felt that no equipment and other such things would be able to go in there. And when we were on the site visit, where his wall has already had so much erosion, there was already a hole going underneath the property. So if we didn't ask him to address the erosion, we're going, he's going to lose potentially a second home, septic, propane, oil, gas, and then we're going to have even larger problems on the lake than we already do. I personally uh, have no issue with the size of the place. I know this is his property, but he's done a lot to address the septic, moving it this way. He's also going to address the wall. And for, I, I, I don't have an issue with it, with it either, Ed. Um, but Mr. Webby, there's an easement that goes through, too. Um, for those of the board members that weren't on a site visit, could you kind of show us where the easement is, it go, I know it goes through Home Street and it goes up through, but it also go, he had to move his septic and other things all around so you could get to num 24 or 22? 20. 20 to 20 Home Street as well, but the, it looks like that home's on Plymouth Street, but it's really not. Right, yeah, it's currently the driveway that's right here, 
the easement for uh, number 20, but it's also a driveway for 22 and 24. Four. And I know that I know you you guys were moving that too to make sure that the septic fit and that all the residents could still get in. So I think that's an important fact to yeah, bring we can't up too. Block right. Right. But the, this, because we have to move the septic to put it outside 100 feet, we have to move the driveway as well. Um, it's not going to put 24 out, but it's it's going to be much further in, in Joe. I think he drew, drew it on there. He did. Moving it to, um, because you, you, know, you can't drive over the septic system. Right. So there's a lot, because of the lot line, it's a really funky lot line between 22 and 24. I'm really limited as to where I can do a lot of things. And to move it outside 100 feet, um, we have to move the driveway, we have to move the septic to you know, this little slot of land to be able to do that. Um, we, we looked at uh, Joe and I have looked at many different orientations mm -hmm. to try to get it there, and it's you can't we can't move further away from the lake than what we are now uh, because the, the um, lot line of the property, as you can see, um, doesn't allow. Is there any way of making it smaller so you're not taking up that much space on the water or um, in the 50 foot? It's, it's, it's just a garage. I, I know it's, I'm saying it's just a garage, but um, I mean, I can look at it. But I, I think the board has asked them to do a lot of extra already. And when we were out and when we did do the, do the site visit, he did tell us all of these things. And those of us on the site visit didn't have issues with it then. So now just because we're seeing it on, on paper and it looks much larger, I don't think it's fair to go back on that word. Well, I must have misunderstood at the site visit because I thought you were saying that the garage was going to be outside the 50-foot totally. So um, no. I misunderstood what you were saying. No, no, not, not totally. It can't be, can't be because of the lot line, where the lot line is and how it is. I wish I could. No, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do everything within the confines, unfortunately, of the, of the law line. You, you know, all the setbacks and everything we've done. I mean, it's still going to be within the setback uh, up to 24, um, uh, the property at 24, only because if, if, I, if I move it over, it will be within the setback for 20. You know what I'm it's just, it's a small piece. Even though it's an acre of land, it's a small piece of that lake that we're trying to keep, you know, keep everything in. And if you look at up towards the street, it's there's no place that you can put it for setbacks to be able to say that I'm going to completely move it. Up From the 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 ramp, yeah, fifty. Yeah. There's nowhere. I mean, the house would be. I think we figured out it would be like fourteen feet wide. So yeah, you know, it, build it where, it's at, where it is, yeah. or. You, you hear that weird, I <coughs> explain as like almost that bubble P going down yes. lot line, and it makes it really difficult. And he has no room to go through any of the other boards or committees to move his house up or to make it smaller to make every to make conservation happy. And it's already been three years yeah. since the tree went through. Yeah. Any other questions from the? Uh, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy. Uh, state your name, please. Jeremy Gillespie, non Ridgeview. I'm looking at your uh, wetlands protection, chapter 164. Is everyone on the commission in agreement that he did not violate any of these bylaws, including alteration, which says destruction of plant life, including kind of trees within 100 feet of Mount Monset? Excuse me. Um, Peggy. That's a question that I asked you. No, please hold on a minute. I have a question for our administrator, Mr. Galipsky, before you give an attitude. Um, Peggy, do you have our book so the board can look into I and see what he has? Can, um, can we please have it so we can check and make sure that we're looking at all the updated laws? Thank you, Peggy. I'm sorry. I'm only asking for conservation's book because a lot of the laws are on different boards and we're only specific to certain things. Well, I don't think that law's changed. The big white book for conservation with all of our bylaws and regulations. That's also a state law. So 
So uh, you have questions about him removing yeah, you, trees? You specifically said no trees were removed between uh, the bank, the high water mark, and 50 feet or 100 feet. So 100 so feet. He had. Uh, I know he had a tree go through his house. Okay. And there were probably other that trees. He's. He, there's three that, trees that. Hold on, let's find, let's make sure that we all have, there are so many bylaws and other things in <clears throat> conservation's book that Peggy has was 100% updated from the selectman's office. Um, they helped me do it with all of our new bylaws, all of our new regulations we've worked on mm -hmm. and since then. So, and a lot of things that are online are older. So I just want to make sure that we're looking at the correct things so we can answer honestly. That's all. I, your question is taking down trees of vegetation <coughs> within the 100 feet. 100 feet. I, uh, well I didn't do a site visit, but from photographs and from the lake, I wasn't satisfied, but I didn't do the site visit. So I can't, without doing the site visit, I can't say, Ed, you're lying. You know what I mean? There was a I, I do understand that there, there, are, there may be a misunderstanding as to how to take measurements. Um, to give you a for instance, I, I mean, if I wanted to measure from where the S is on the Massachusetts down to the E, let's say the lake is where the E is, and I measure up to where the S is, and, and you know, straight line distance on the map, that's only 50 feet, but over the surface, oh, that's 150 feet, I'm plenty of room, but you're not. You can't take the curve in, into account. The curve of the bank doesn't count, and that's in the conservation bylaws, and that's in the state law. The curve of the bank doesn't count. It's straight line. We understand that. And when the complaint came in, there was already an NOI that had been approved before you or I were on the I board, know. too. So I, He wanted my honest opinion. That's my honest opinion. I'm not satisfied that red vegetation was not removed in the 100-foot buffer zone. But I did not and, do the site visit. And his NOI still, still has some time left on it, and he hasn't fully complied with all of his conditions either where we asked him to replan and do things so that's a question of he still has time to get it done and I mean to be quite honest Mr. Galipsky you have emailed us and let us know that you have done things within the hundred foot sure. board that you that you've done and you don't have an R RDA or an NOI on file. I just have to order this to stay on the focus on this Stay what's on the agenda, yes. Get sidetracked. Well, the board's being biased if we don't address it. Absolutely. 164. What are you asking me? Your question on which law? I just want to triple check our book. The bylaws? Yeah. That you read. 64. Alteration under the definitions. Alterations prohibited, except as permitted by the Conservation Commission or as provided in this chapter, no person shall remove, fill, dredge, build upon or alt the following resource areas. Any freshwater wetland, including any marsh, wet meadow, bog or swamp, or with 100 feet of any freshwater wetland, any bank, beach, lake, river, pond or stream, or within 100 feet of any bank, beach, lake, river, pond or stream. Any land under said waters and any land subject to the flooding or inundation by groundwater or surface water or within 100 feet of such land. So having read what's in our bylaws under 64.3 for the alterations prohibited, my honest opinion is no, we didn't do anything wrong because before I was a board member, he had in place approved an RDA and an NOI. And this him to yes, his NOI it's had. I've had other ones from other properties that I've seen that just said nothing about that. Yeah, it was done anyway. So it seems like there's like a little bit of favoritism, and it's not about the owner. I wasn't. I right. wasn't on the board, Mr. Galipsky, and I have said since I've been on the board, the board needs consistency. 
Well, one thing about sure does. One thing about when we usually give permission to move, remove trees, it's for safety, houses, other issues like that. That's why we. So what about the other residents? Of well, if there's a tree tilted about to fall in someone's house, yes, we're gonna give them permission right. to cut it. And we're not gonna let them lose their house. Right. And there is, but since I've been on the board, we've approved it at least six times. Yeah. All right. Any other questions regarding? Excuse me one minute. It's my children. Any other questions? No. Wait for her to come back, then we'll vote on it. Okay. Reference to 383. Um, so that the closet? Yeah, the, the U shaped driveway. It's on the first page. Yeah, I already messed all my stuff up. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry, everyone. No, no problem at all. I have a motion for the notice of 10 for 22 Home Street. I'll make a motion to approve 22 Home Street. As, as the board asked to continue the hearing, and as um, Joe has brought in, Mr. Webby has brought in the amended plans. And did you get? Um, oh, wait. Uh, uh, can we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. Nay. Huh? They did get the unanimous decision, so it does not pass. A majority, I should say. So, Peggy, would you happen to know, or can you find out what happens? Because we're missing a board member, so we're actually missing a vote, because the board should have five. We might have a quorum, but can you find out if and how he can get a proper vote or how he appeals this for him? Because it's a tie vote. It's not a not pass. It's a... It's a two and two. By our bylaws, can an associate member vote if we don't have a, if we don't have a full board? No. No. Okay. Just a question. And we don't we don't have associate members, so. Okay. No, I, I will definitely double check, but it's my I, understanding just from doing meetings that two and two is a nay until you get your fifth. But I, I will double check. Because and then we're going to need to know how this affects the board of health because. He, he, I know that Mr. Valley is going to have issues now that it didn't pass. Serious issues. So. May, may, I, um, may, may I talk to John? Sure. Absolutely. Just as an interim, can we, um, as a board, I know people outside of my neighborhood, people outside this meetings have asked me, They, I know that they put in on the talent sheet probably four meetings ago. Really? Um, and I haven't heard anything about I any asked, of this. I've yeah. asked a few times. Pam is on vacation. I did okay. ask her a couple of weeks ago, and she had she only had um, two. All right, I'll call those people out and tell them. I'll I She's on vacation, you know. so I will check her. Yeah, out next week. I, I, I also, should have a full board. I also know seven people that have put in talent yeah. blank forms yeah. specifically, yeah. specifically for conservation. One of them being Can a conservation. Yeah. Okay. But as long as it's recently. One of, I think you and I are thinking the same person. He's no. a former conservation agent. Nope. Once it, a year is passed. One, yeah. Okay. One, okay. Yeah. One of them's a conservation agent. I that's will been in town know. a while that 
does that it wouldn't be a conflict of interest because they're an agent in Northville County, oh, not no. Bristol, not Plymouth. So. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. So we should let people know that if they put one in over a year ago, they need to put a new one in. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and I did um, and put it on our website, and I put it on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. And we have Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. We were so. Sh I know that Mrs. Sherry put out an email to everybody, even if they were a year old. I want to say about five months ago. Okay. Because they were short, so many talent blank forms. Okay. I'll check for what she comes in on Monday. Perfect. All right. So we'd be looking for one full member and two associates. Okay. I would say thank you for coming in. Do it again. Sorry, I'm sorry. Like that. I'm to no, no, no. Hey. You know. That's it. You know. So is it up to us to uh, continue this or to appeal this? And what's the best avenue to approach? Um, well, go ahead. I would say probably not continue because we just you just died. Yes. Um, so I guess the appeal, but I don't know the process. I apologize. Yeah, and we're gonna we're we're Peggy's gonna find out too where we don't have a full board where that where that last vote would go because I know in the past I've seen it where there's no full boards that the selectmen step in especially and I'm not going to go into detail because I don't want to create a public fair un no, no. unnecessarily That's where the Board of Health is going to have serious concerns and I think that if we had that fifth person or that fifth vote or had the board other than myself known if I hadn't had to step out the vote may have been different had they know about the health concerns so uh, just for, just for your information John um, the clerk is out until Monday and so is the admin for um, select board um, she's out until Monday also they're both on vacation so I, I will check with them okay. with what to do and how to move appeal and okay. and what we need to do but his approved NOI that's still on file and that's still good he can still would continue with that work correct I don't know um, where the board denied. I don't know where. But we only did. Wasn't continue. it contingent, contingent with approval? So I can't really do anything. Mm, the NO, the, your old any NOI, I don't believe the vote was contingent on. The, the amendment and contingent and approval was for your dwelling. That, I mean, we. I'm just going to come out and say it. The board voting, no just created a public health threat for your entire neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel that we should, you know, be patting ourselves on the back for it. I don't think there's any patting on the back here right no, now. So. I don't think so. So uh, I, think it's, I, think it, I think it's disgusting, and this is where we need to have better, I, com better communication with other boards and things. The Board of Health can, I mean, they come to us first. The Board of Health can say, no, we, it has to be done. The Board of Health already did that. Well, Unless it's a public health, and this is my understanding, I could check the blog, but just being there for 16 years, unless there's a public health hazard, immediate public health hazard, it's bubbling up on the ground or anything like that, the plan itself is good for two years. Just, just so you know. But I can check the blog. Yeah, I check with the Board of Health and I check with DPH and I check with the Housing and Sanitary Authority too. Because I have a feeling you have many well, residents that matter. Trump conservation. And you can go from there. Yep. All right. Let's move on. Thank you. No problem. Uh, I'm going to move on to Enrad, uh, continued hearing for 111 River Street. Can I have a. The um, 111 was continued, correct? Street, um, it says on behalf of, Do we have to put a motion and it continue? Uh, yes, the client is asking for okay. a continuance to the uh, July 18th meeting. Okay, I'll make a motion to continue the uh, 111 River Street hearing to July. the July what did you say? 18th. To, 18th. The, to the July 18th meeting. We'll put it on the agenda. Huh. I second. I have one question. Okay. Um, how many times has this been continued? Um, it has been continued a couple of times. The re reason for the request for continuance this time is that 
the peer review went out to ecosystems and it came back at over nine thousand dollars so they've asked to have it um, sent out to a couple of other and see and, and see if there's a better my memory is that we asked for a continuance one time for them to do something so this is the first time they're yes. asking for a yes. continuance okay so. um it, it, but no matter what it comes back at right if you're not comfortable with the other ones and feel someone else would do better it's up to the board and it's a large parcel, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's a really big open field. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, they said it's, right it's huge. Yeah. Um, so, sorry, who made the motion? I made the motion to continue. And did we have a second? I Kathy. Second. Kathy seconds. All right. Favor. All right. Aye. All right. That will be continued to the new subject. All right. Before we get to a couple of discussions, uh, can you have a motion to um, a motion to approve? The minutes for December 13th, 2022, December 27th, 2022, January 10th, 2023, January 24th, 2023, February 14th, 2023, and June 6th, 2023. Can All right, I'll, uh, I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from December 13th, December 27th, both of 2022, January 10th, January 24th, February 14th, and June 6th, all of 2023. Second. Um, I can't vote on some of these. I wasn't here at the meeting. Right. So whoever was at them can vote on them. So well, I, uh, I was just want some... approval for signatures. Yeah. 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 Approval for signatures. Okay. Well, All favor? Aye. 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 Well, her open meeting law individually is supposed to vote to approve them and we're only only voting to approve for signatures so we're not actually approving each individual meeting minute right just that that motion was just to have them all signed and then we each individual right when we when you get there from that hasn't signed by i mean so i don't have the names approved. you didn't sign all of those are once they're signed are they approved yes yeah okay thank you i'm like what so it's, do we have any? it's just yes. it's an inaccurate way to do it. Yes. Um, she tells you Yeah. We'll have to triple check with Sue when she comes back, but I'm 90% sure that when we do meeting minutes, they have to be approved individually and only by those that are at the meeting. Um, um, okay. So, what, what has to do it over in? So, open meeting, I don't know I who's believe, who. if I'm not mistaken, open meeting law, they don't even have, it's not a requirement for them to be signed. It's a requirement for them to be approved. Just everybody always signs them. Right, gotcha. So, you could even have like one signature in. It's still, as long as it was approved at the meeting, and open, open meeting, then they would. Okay. Because it's not signatures out. I'm pretty sure. No, I understand that. But I think in the future we'll find out that we're supposed to do them per meeting, not well, if we can agree to do each one right now. That's fine with me. Yeah, that's fine. That's okay. Fine. Uh, Motion for June 6th. Yeah, just sign it. And it's the, to be. Okay. In the first page, right. yeah. Who no, I just don't want any new uh, yeah, but meeting law complaints or Essex or anything like that to come back in. And was June 6th the last meeting? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, so the last meeting, okay. June 6th. Right. Well, I'm out on that one. I wasn't at the June 6th meeting. No, you were at the you June 6th meeting. You weren't at the one in May. The last one sure? before that. Yeah, last yeah. Oh, before right. we switched. Okay. We have a motion to approve the minutes for June 6th. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for June 6th, 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So those ones can I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, yeah, I was at that well, one. Well, we'll go into 14th. I missed the third one. You want to go? Yep. The, the 14th, yeah. I wasn't here. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from February 14th, 2023. No. Favor? Aye. Aye. I think the three of us. You had to be. Okay. 
Okay. If she wasn't, you had to be. <laughs> uh, present at the meeting. Yes. Kim, you were here. Oh, on the 14th. Valentine's Day. Well, that's right. Nobody showed up that day. I was, yeah, was cracking jokes. Literally, the three of us sat there in an empty room. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody loves mine. See, it was an uneventful meeting. <laughs> that's for sure. So, <laughs> those are the best ones. Okay, <laughs> next one for approval for minutes for January 24th, 2023. Minutes. People were present. Kathy, myself, Kim. I make a motion we approve those. Minutes from January 24th, 2023. Give me a second. Um, Peggy, you can take Kaviki off of everything that involves me, too, by the way. I, I don't think I did those minutes. Uh, give no. me a second. The minute. Give me a second to January 24th. I wasn't there. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, approval of minutes for January 10th, 2023. People present. Kathy, myself, Kim. Can I have a motion? I have a motion to accept the minutes for January 10th, 2023. Can we have a second? Can second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We have a motion for December 27, 2022. People present. Myself, Kim, and Steve. I make a motion to approve the minutes from December 27, 2022. Can I have a second? Um, on the meeting minutes, I need one correction. My name's wrong. It's only Kimberly King. It's not Kimberly King hyphen Kavicki. Just so, um, okay, that's if you, a clerical. yeah, it's just a clerical thing. All the rest of the minutes are fine. Not to, not to nitpick, but at the time, was that your legal name at the no. time the meeting minutes? Oh, okay. It hasn't been that way for a while. I'm like, you know, if we're going to do it that way, you know, it's... No, it's I things. just haven't been making a big deal about it, yes. but it's so time to... It's the signature page, so, um... I... you already signed it, just cross off the committee and I'll change it on the computer. No worries. Yeah. I already did. Okay. Okay, uh, December 13th, 2022. We have approval for minutes. Uh, Kim was here. I'm sorry. For, for the 27th. You, motion. You, you made the motion. Yep. Second. Second? Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. December 13th, motion for the minutes. Uh, people were here. Kim, Colleen, who's no longer a member. Steve, myself. Oh, I was absent. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Uh, yes. Yeah, so how do we do that? December 13th. Me and you. You. It was me, you, and that was Colleen's last right. meeting. Right. So. And I was away. Yeah, and Kathy had to leave that day. So we're going to have to approve them because Colleen left There's the no board. Longer, There's yeah. no longer yeah. here. Um, all right, I'll make a motion. I'll to second the, the motion. motion. December 13th, 2022. All in favor? Aye. Uh, I'll say aye. Just do it. See what that was. And then I guess we're just going to have to make it publicly known that the member that was present at that time is no longer with us. The board didn't have an admin. It didn't have a secretary. Um, and town hall is going through some changes. Right, so I'm that's sure. the only reason there's two signatures. I'm certain we're not the only board that's happened to. You don't. Recently. <laughs> I, I, am, I am more than well aware, aware of that, Steve. However. No, just so the record's clear, that's all. Okay. I'm sure there's a. a okay. She's got one I more sign. that was going to be the quickest part of me. She's got one more to sign. Okay. Uh, no bills, right? Okay, these are just signatures. 29, uh, who needs to sign this? 29 White Island. These are just signatures. We don't need to do them individually. We don't need a motion. No, these are just signatures, yeah. Uh, okay. 31 Ocean Ave, 26 White Island Roads, 3031 Home Street, and 323 Home Street. These are just signatures. 26 White Island, 331 Home Street, and 323 Home Street are for road work, and they're looking at the conservation approval. And what was the other one? I'm sorry. With 26 White Island Road. 31 Ocean. What's the other one? Okay, 31 Ocean is here. 26 White Island Road, you want to talk about? Which? 
with 26 White Island Road, the road cut, the road cut, and the road cut are all for utilities, correct? Yes, if uh, I can't vote on this, but I don't think it's voting it, but I have conflict of interest, I work for a company. Right. Oh, gotcha. No, I, um, uh, I just wanted to understand because there's so many it, new complaints coming in and some neighborhood stuff so that I wanted to make sure it was the actual utility yeah. company. Yeah, we just need so, one seat. Okay. So, and we... Yeah. Yeah. Um, 31 Perfect. Island Road was... Um, how'd final inspection go, Ed? Huh? For, how'd the final inspection go for 31 Ocean Ave? I was just missing that. So he did the site visit and the inspection. 31 Ocean, remember he had the dock in the... In oh, the yeah, he did, that, he did move the... Um, Asphalt, and he did plant grass. I think I did mention that last meeting. You mentioned so the, some stuff, and everybody was going out again. So I don't think the certificate of compliance was on was on the agenda to have you sign it. That's yeah. why it's back on here. But you did mention it last meeting. Yeah, twenty nine was done. Thirty one. So any of the road cuts, done. they only require one signature from the board. So it makes yeah. sense to have the chair sign. She, she the always chair. signs them. Right. She's not here. That's different. So. 31 White Island Road. Yeah, usually goes Kathy Ed, secretary, and then if I'm not available, yeah. they hunt you down. The certificate of compliance. You did the yes. site visit. He has already submitted his checks to be sent out for, to um, okay. the Plymouth Registry of Deeds, and I will send them out tomorrow. And a uh, quick question. I know it was in the court there was some kind of fines paid. Did he pay those? That was from a prior. Yeah, I just don't know. We, don't, we never got notification if he ever paid them. Yeah, yeah, I think you were. Okay, I wasn't even going to When uh, when he first had the dock, when I first joined the commission, we had the dock and the pavement, and we kept talking to him about it, and we kept, and then we sent out fines and letters, and you know, I did, I don't know how it ever went after that he because then he started to comply. If he went to court, and he ended up paying a couple hundred dollars maybe. Oh, okay. I think that's because they would. Did he pay the court at the time, or did he? It, it, when it, it, if he didn't pay, when he goes to sell the house, there'll be a lien on it. Yeah. So okay. we might want to... We have all the records. We have all the records yeah. of all the... Well, it, if we sign everything, it goes out. It goes through when he has a private buyer. And it goes through before we reach research anything or no. If he hasn't paid and the lien doesn't go on before it's all approved, then there's a potential he could get away with not paying them. But I mean... It costs it costs the town more money than it put it a at this right. right. I, I think we'll I think we'll take that risk. I've been involved in means on homes for work years ago, and uh, okay. they, they only did it when it was above fifty thousand. Yeah, it does seem to Yeah. 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 You see, I won't get involved. I won't yeah. Yeah. See, and Peggy did those ones because my name's right. I know that. Or. You just can't get any of it. Well, no, no, it has to be at a meeting, that's right. So we'll just do that. This is 31. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is that everything you I think that's all the seniors, right? All right. Thank you. Yes. That's yours. I got one. Mine's all marked Mine's up here. Six, six. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This next one looks like it'll be pretty simple. I mean, it's 15 years left. It's just paperwork, really. Do we have to discuss it? I don't know if there's anything we're supposed to sign. Okay, quick uh, question with you on the uh, Farmview Estates, 203 Hudson Street. Do we need to sign anything or anything? So, no, I, I have a, a dilemma and I don't know where to go from here. So, okay. uh, Attorney Casper uh, did a closing for a client about 15 years ago at 203 Hudson Street. It was part of the Farmview Estates down on Hudson Street. Um, so he held many in escrow for his client, and now he's retiring, and he wants to give his client back the escrow. I I don't have a certificate of compliance, um, so I told him what needed to be done, but he said he, he, he doesn't represent the developer, and the developer is out of business. Did the Farmview um, Estates ever get completed? Is I, I, I believe it's completed. He said that so, all of the homes so who's down his, there. So who's so, his client? This, he didn't say who's client. This is the first time, this isn't the first time this happened, and I believed when um, Deb was with us mm -hmm. that she had to go through the Registry of Deeds, the courts, town council, 
and it took a lot of effort on her part. She went above and beyond, um, but it was also um, a much older client with the same, with almost the same yeah. story. The attorney was getting ready to go out of business. The developer um, went bankrupt. It wasn't oh they just yeah. no longer existed past because, um, and it's this isn't this isn't going to be the first time it comes up either because I don't know who's in charge of making sure the developer follows through, yeah. which board it is, whether it's the planning board, the ZBA, building department, maybe it's all of them, but nothing has been done correctly right. we for, to watch ourselves for decades for legal liability so. because he's not telling us who he represents and in my my thought is that anything that's held in escrow in his original the developer but if the developer's out of business it's not. he said he does have enough money so he said he does have enough money in his client's account to probably have the wetland scientists go down and look at it and request the coc so the question comes down to, is it really that one person's responsibility to pay the developer's costs? Can, we get, can you get trouble with that too? I would, I, this is something I'd bring to Cody and Town Council. Yeah, so for that sure. Too. Because, for sure. I just wanted the boards to be, be, And it's not, the, it's not the first time it's occurred. And it's not going to be the last time it occurs. And, no, I think and it's now good. it's, now that we have a new town administrator, the selectmen and Cody are getting ready to interview. People are applying. Um, okay. That all of that good stuff. That they should be aware of these past mistakes, past okay. errors. Um, and a lot of these areas, we had so much political yuck go on okay. because of the buildup of a lot of these things. And I don't want to go into the past, but. No, it's I'll it's uh, it. outside this board's pay range, but yeah. I don't so, want it to get ugly for all of us. Send it to them so that, yeah, you know, like I said, we're covering our liability. I, I don't think it's his money. Yeah, okay, that was. It's not ours either. It, it's. So. It could be. It might have to be split between the yeah. neighbors. There might be other things. There yep. might be other yeah. problems. Yeah. But I mean, town council, town it might go to a general yeah. fund yep. somewhere. Okay. They might ask for it to be donated somewhere. Right. right. All right. Thank you, Kim. Let's move yes. on. Um, I'm just going to randomly do these because. Yeah, the next one really isn't anything else. No, no, we, we, we just need a signature. Uh, yeah, that's you guys. Is it for 550, Yeah, yeah. Okay. You guys went out to that, that's all set. Yeah, there's no disturbance. All right, I think it was just for basic maintenance and repair. Yeah, yeah okay. So, yeah. Um, Erosion and grants. Yes. Yeah, did you ever get that information to us? I did not get an email from you. I went and sudden the whole board an email. It would come through Peggy, and Peggy was out sick, and I oh, had a okay. son break an ankle. Okay. Um, That's all. But I did go, instead of making one gigantic email to you, Peggy, I can make it really simple. It can all be found on epa.gov. Perfect. And I went on today. And the only update I have is they've added even more grants. Perfect. Okay. And, and the rest of us, I will, I will, I can't say for them, but I will look at it and we should probably discuss it at the next meeting because I have not reviewed any material. Okay, let's, you can do what I do, Kim, though. You can email the board individually. I never email. I always email I, individually. We can't because if it, but that's me discussing with more than three board members that makes a quorum and then it has to go on the agenda. Individually. Nope. Well, not, you, not if you're, you're not you're discussing, just saying, discussing You're sending them the information you have. The, you're not uh, discussing it. Town Council and the Selectmen, and when an open meeting law complaint of when it was Deb, told me only to go through the admin and never with everybody. Right. So we might okay. double check that. I will or, check. I'll check the code. I'm only going through with what Charlie had and when we had other employees. Okay. Got it. Check it out. Yeah, okay, EPA.gov. And Mr. Galipsky, EPA.gov now has residential grants listed as well for erosion control and some other things. Let's leave it up to the plants. Um, All right, Dirty thing? White Island Road, is there a complaint update? Uh, you have no idea yes, what's going on here. Um, the homeowner uh, is here, um, Elizabeth Fuller. Okay. Um, I did. She sent she me. Sent a letter. Yeah, she sent a letter, I and I did letter. email. Um, oh, I have it. I replied yeah. to you, Peggy. Yes, Let yes. me pull mine up. Um, I do have it here. Excuse me. While I'm, uh, did you print it? I did. Uh, well, then I won't have to be using my phone. She fixed the old back, but she said it's fine. Yeah. The, 
Chief did say it's fine, and I am working with, uh, uh, reached out to DEP. I've uh, had some um, contact and communication with them regarding docs, peers, things like that. You, The um, information that you sent us and the links that you sent the board were absolutely fabulous. I yeah. learned a lot more in where crossover is, and um, I'll let you speak for yourself about um, yeah, the well, brief discussion we had. So when he gets back from vacation, we'll delve into it more, and um, then we'll go from there. Because the yeah, there's some great ideas, and if you'd ask him, um, and maybe the selectmen too, with those ideas, if maybe a representative from both will come to our meeting, so it can all be openly discussed, so we're transparent. Yeah. Because I think that it that would be the way to go for the homeowners on the lake. Yes. And it would clear up a lot of issues if the selectmen and the harbor master, lake master are on um, board. Yeah, and, and this conversation here for 30 White Island regarding the dock also is the same, I'm going to tell you, for 17 Lake Street, 49 Lake Street, 51 Lake Street, and 515 North Ponson. I am in discussions with DEP and Chief, and, and I'll update you as soon as we have. Sounds good. What we need to do. Sounds good. And Elizabeth, do you, is it, yeah, the answer is She's the owner of Pretty White Island. Um, um, can I'm sorry. Out. Can I have a copy of her letter to it's read in, it? In oh. Folder. oh, sorry. I pulled out my old folder. No, it's. I think it's. I think it's there. Yeah. Hello, Elizabeth. It's me. Nice <laughs> to meet you. So I wrote this last night after a very long week and just kind of rambled. Um, so when I talked to Peggy on the phone, she said just kind of give a background of what's going on. Yeah. So I originally purchased the house last April. I almost didn't purchase the house because down at the water is a boat house. And the DEP shows it on my property. Everything I had showed it on my property, but there was no access to it. So it was going to be a deal breaker because I didn't want to buy this property and not have a way to go in there and demolish that or upkeep or access to it. Was there any record on how they previous or so it was the board house being used? How they did get access to it? Yeah, from 360 Montmartre. Mm -hmm. So that's the abutting property. Mm -hmm. So. I talked to Conservation Commission last year before I bought it. I talked to them about what you need for a dock, etc. cetera. Um, and I talked to the two realtors, my realtor and the one selling the home. And nobody could produce anything that said that this building was not my building. So I was going to back out of the deal because I don't like not knowing what I'm getting into. But I walked over and I spoke with the owner at 360 Mont Ponce. And she went down memory lane. We had a very <laughs> nice conversation. We walked around her property. She showed me everything. She told me her brothers and her grew up there. She was in there all the time. I said, perfect. That's good enough for me. She said, let me call my realtor, you know, because I know she has the survey. To talk to her. So I got on the phone with the realtor, and I don't know if I just hit her at a bad moment, but she unleashed, she was crazy. She's like, leave my customer alone, whatever, my client alone, you're scaring her, you this. I'm like, what? Because we were just walking around. So, anyways, I said, that's good enough for me. I went ahead with the purchase. So, lots of things have happened since I moved in. And I know there's a history on the street. So, the house to the left has lots of problems with the landlord. There were drug issues, there were all kinds of things going on. Now, the couple that live there are moving. They're very friendly, they're very nice, never had a problem with them. But the constant between the landlord and them you know, he's shutting off the gas. He, he's in a world of trouble right now as a landlord. And I just try to stay out of it, but I think, I think there's something wrong with him. So when I come home at night, like, if he's around, which he's not supposed to be, he's, you know, saying something about the property. Or you have, I have the leg of a sawhorse over the line. 
Okay, so he's a little cuckoo. A couple of weeks ago, he sprayed my shrubs with his weed killer. He's getting nasty. I just want to put up a, a privacy fence. I'm aware that the previous owner, when I bought the house, said this guy's built his stairs on the, on our wall. They're they're not legal. He's not supposed to have done that. You know, he's got the gas tank for the stove there. I've got to find out what the distance is for that. I'm nervous about that because I think it's 10 to 12 feet between our houses. He ran his um, sprinklers through that side of the house, so when I install my fence, I got to be careful of the lines. But I've, mu I, I've talked to him, I know where they are, I'm on set, I just want to block them. But his septic is family. I dealt with it all last summer. It stinks. Did he talk, contact the Board of Health on that? That's no, I guess I don't need to do anything because the people that are leaving are taking legal action and that's imperative. So I'm not getting involved. If it overflows and it's going in the other person's yard and then down the road. But just so you know, the Board of Health is one of the only offices that can take anonymous calls. So if you fear retribution... Well, when I called person. the Board of Health and I called this Conservation Commission mm -hmm. regarding 28, um, not 2832, uh, he came to the meeting here and somebody told him I called and I asked to stay anonymous. And then somebody also told him that the other neighbor called 14 times. So the guy already knows, okay? And I'm okay with that. I don't have 14 calls, just so you know. I know. I'm, 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 I'm telling you what the This is all what these guys say to me as I'm walking in the door. Oh, I don't know. We didn't give up any names. The this was some time ago, wasn't it? Because I wasn't here. I don't it was know. A year ago, I, it was a, a year ago. It was a, well, that, around yeah. April that I spoke with her. Well, the one, the, the the one she's talking about, the thirty-two White Island, is the retaining wall that just recently the gentleman. Oh, the guy came in. Jason. Yes, yes. yes. So Twenty-eight White Island. Jason told me he was fined ten thousand six hundred dollars, and he only ended up paying seventy-five. We don't. And he's do the, fines. That's, that's we didn't find him, but we no. didn't get that stage. This didn't. is what he's saying to me. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, and then all right. All right. Okay. So, so he's a weirdo. Too. So, all I'm saying well, all right, all right, time out, time out. Time, <laughs> it's, all right, just to, the, the board's not going to get into gossip. We're not going to get into people's no, reputations and such. To but the as secretary, I should be reading your letter in, and then I did answer Peggy's email to your letter. Oh, great. Um, to state it, if they, you don't mind. So, June 9th, and this is in regards to 30 White Island. Mm -hmm. um, I did go out after last meeting. Um, I took the photos from the white line because the property is posted, no trespass. I did knock on the door, it wasn't answered. I emailed Peggy. Um, Peggy was able to have the police chief go out, the harbor master, um, and he was able to connect with the homeowner. And then we finally got a response after, I believe we've put this continued for three or four meetings. Um, so finally got a response. This is the response from the homeowner for 30 White Island. Dear Ms. Stelter, I would like to start this letter by apologizing for not getting this into you sooner. I was very busy with a heavy workload last week and a school graduation for my son. I am hoping the board will have time to review the letter before tomorrow's evening's meeting. I am writing this letter in response to a letter dated May 10th, 2023, which I received on or around June 14th, 2023, by certified mail. This letter instructed me to cease and desist all construction that was being completed on my property located within the 100-foot buffer zone of Monponsett Pond. I spoke with the chief of police, the Harbor Lake Master, regarding work completed, which included replacement of rotted deck boards in the center portion of the dock. I also informed the chief that I removed old sections of the dock that had sunk to the bottom of the lake. I will be using my boat to transport the wood pile to the town dock where I can load it into my pickup truck for proper disposal. Additionally, I would like to remove brush from the parcel of land I own by the water in order to retrieve trash and debris from the land. Due to the proximity of the land to Route 58, trash is thrown from vehicles and cleanup and is an ongoing task. Removal of the brush thorn bushes mostly will allow me to keep up with the cleanup. 
Unfortunately, when I went to inspect the dock area this spring, I found that along with the trash, a large pile of trees, shrubs, leaves had been dumped onto my property. I spoke with the owners of the abutting property, 360 Montponsa Street, to ask if they were aware that debris had been dumped there and as it came from the cleanup of my pro as it it came from the cleanup of the property last fall. The new owners were not aware of the debris as they had just purchased the property in October of last year and the grounds had already been landscaped by the previous owner and her realtor. They kindly granted me permission to drive my truck down her backyard in order to remove the debris pile. This, however, is not feasible for me as the pile is huge and I would need to carry the debris around the, the boathouse up the steep incline with old steps and then dump that and then to the dump that collects brush. There is no other means of egress to the property to remove the brush pile. Therefore, am I respectfully asking the board if I can use a small gas-powered wood chipper to clear the debris from the land so that I can continue to clean up debris from passing cars. Since the purchase of my home last year, I've also been cutting back overgrowth on the back hill of my property. A path down to the rock runs, runs through the yard and my plan is to install approximately seven steps on the steep portion of the yard. The steps will be constructed with by four by four cedar lumber and rebar with small stones in the center. In addition, I plan to install approximately seven cedar posts and rope to use as a handrail. The last construction pro project I have planned for this year is to install a PVC and shingling fence around the front of my property. Abutting my property is 28 White Island Road and 32 White Island Road. The owners of the property at 32 have recently built a retaining wall in the back of their property and put up a fence. At the beginning of the project, the owners of 32 White Island Road brought an excavator and bobcat down my side yard to gain access to their backyard. Although I did not have any objection to this, I did feel the owner should have asked permission. I was quite surprised to see the equipment in my side yard. Upon seeing the machines in my yard, I went to ask the owner what he was planning. He told me he was Installing a retaining wall and fence, I went into the house to retrieve my survey and bought it out to the show the operator. I asked if they needed help to identify the property lines before they proceeded. I was told they did not need help, had a survey, and had all the necessary permits they needed to complete the project. As the board is aware, a cease and desist letter was later sent to the owners because installation of the retaining wall was located within 100 foot of the pond. A building inspector arrived and the owners were told to pour concrete into the wall, add drainage, and add a fence along the rear. The inspector did not see that the owners had dug up an old 5 by 4 footing into the stairs and this was done prior to his visit. The concrete sat on the neighbor's backyard for a while before it was used as backfill under the new wall. Unfortunately, the wall will most likely fail in the future. During this time, I spoke with the conservation regarding the backfilling of a dry well in the neighbor's backyard. I wanted to make sure that the water would not back up in the neighbor's yard and into my yard. At this point, I believe adding drainage to the retaining wall may take care of that potential problem. I later called the Department of Health when I came home from work one afternoon and the neighbor had driven a pump truck down my side yard and was in the process of driving the concrete Cree truck down the yard. I had to ask them to stop as they were driving over my septic tank and I was afraid it would collapse. The DPH determined my septic tank should be all right. However, the concrete truck was too heavy to go through the yard. My neighbors complied and left the truck on his driveway before continuing the work. Com upon completion of the project, my neighbor said he would up regrade and recede my lawn. I informed him that I would be Extending the fence along the front portion of my property at this point, he asked where the property lines were and if his fence was located in the proper place. I told him I had offered my survey at the beginning of his project and asked if he had one. I was told his survey was in the house. I told him he should look at it. At this point, I also told him it looked like the fence was right on the line. I later went to measure, went to measure using my survey. I discovered that at the beginning of the fence is approximately five inches away from the line and the rear portion of the fence and the retaining wall approximately 1.5 to f over the line into my backyard. At this point, I am not sure what to do. The last property abutting mine is 28 Wyland Road. I plan to put a privacy fence with white PVC and chain link fence on the side of my property. I have spoken with the owner of 28 Wyland Road and pointed out exactly where I'm putting the fence. At first, he said I couldn't because he was putting a fence up but then he since said to go ahead with the work. Located within a foot of where I am putting the fence is an underground box containing the pipes or a sprinkler system. I was told by the owner that the fence will not impact the pipes. Also along 
the lower side of my property is a concrete wall. According to the owner of 28 Island Road, the wall belongs to him. My survey shows my property line runs through the middle of the wall. I had planned on using the existing holes in the walls for my chain link fence poles to make the installation neater and less work. However, the adjacent owner does not want me to touch the wall, so I will back the fence off six inches. Lastly, while sitting on my deck a few weeks back, my neighbor was spraying his weeds with weed killer. I also said, I said hello and he began yelling at me that my shrubs were on his land. He continued to say that he was bringing in an excavator to grade his backyard. He said when he does that he will rip out my shrubs. I was quite surprised that the shrubs were not on his land. I pointed this out and told him to look at my survey that I sent him. His reply was that he did not give a F blank blank K <laughs> was my survey. At this point I went back to my house to get my cough my cup of coffee. When I returned to the deck, the neighbor was spraying his weed killer on my shrubs. Out of the three shrubs, one died, one's half dead, and the other survived. Each shrub cost me 50. I am not sure what to do to continue with my home improvements without upsetting him. Any help would be greatly appreciated. At this time, I would also like to voice concerns I have regarding 28 White Island Road. It is obvious that the septic system for this property is failing. The property itself is a one-family home with three bedrooms and is occupied by a married couple and two boys. The landlord has been residing in the basement illegally for a few years and there is some sort of legal battle going on between the parties. In addition to the failing septic tank, there is a huge foundation problem. It appears the rear of the house along with the concrete steps and retaining walls are failing and pulling away from the house. I am not concerned that my property will be damaged, however the property on the other side of White 28 White Island Road will definitely be impacted. My only complaint at this time is the smell. Would it be possible to have that issue addressed? I realize this letter was long and tedious, however, I wanted to have you to have the whole picture when reviewing my case. I truly enjoy living on the water here in Halifax, and I am hoping that these issues can be resolved amicably. I am open to suggestions on how to go about making updates to my property without having problems with my neighbors. Please let me know if you have any additional questions. Um, my answer to Peggy was that a lot of this letter was unfortunately doesn't fall under conservation. I know, but I um, just want to address conservation. I was just yeah. so, the full picture. So fences, et cetera, is the building department. Permits, et cetera, et cetera would, Peggy would know, Carolyn would know more about that, but you're gonna need permits and all sorts of other things. For, for your you fences, know. you need. Oh, I already know all that. Um, yeah. You don't have an NOI or an RDA, yes. Yes. so you, you don't have an RDA or an NOI on file with conservation for any of the work yeah, you want to do. Any of the notice of so, you want to have done. Yeah. So. Yeah, the fences, the steps. You have three. You have to file Yeah, that's fine. That's down the line. I haven't even got. My to suggestion to you would be so, to put anything in that notice of intent that you have thoughts, or hopes, or dreams to do in the next three years. Yeah, I'll write you put it all up in the notice of intent, like that. all of you know, removing the brush there. because you're, you're that close to the wetland. You need to, if you're going to, there's fees involved, an engineer for what a DEP is involved to be able to get permission to work on your property because you're in the 100 foot buffer under the wetlands protection act i know i know all of that and she also and needs an after the fact rda for the deck deck work correct for what deck work? for her dock for the for the dock where she did the repairs? I don't think she, so. No, because it's a repair. Because the dock itself was existing, it, she simply she replaced ports. Okay. Yeah. So I don't think so. I actually write work plans for a living, okay? And I work for Hillman Consulting. I'm oh. thinking about working for the DEP on this section, and I've been offered a job with them. All I want to do is be left alone from my neighbors. I don't want people with all due respect. I don't want people building on my land. I don't want people spraying my land. I will deal with that portion with the chief. Peggy asked me to put everything on a letter so you had the big picture. Right. I'm just trying to they right. had their suggestions you, and I'm just trying to give you my finish, suggestion. Please. Finish. And then and then you can give me those. You uh, when I moved here last year. I spoke yeah. with conservation. It was a different secretary or admin. It was different people. I was told by the realtors that the dock was grandfathered in. So I asked everybody. I've already spoken with the DEP, who, who was in charge of this area. That's who sent, Which, me, that's who sent me that picture, okay? 
So I know where the dock is. I just want to know where my boundary lines are. So you I don't want people throwing their trees and shrubs. It's just me and my boys. I want to come home, go in my house, go down and sit on my land. I don't want to pick up the stuff from the 60 Mon Ponset. They need to get their ass with me butts over there and pick it up. I want the guy who built on my land to produce his survey that he says he has that shows he's in the right spot. So I just want to answer the conservation. I will write up a work plan for the steps, for the fence. I will submit everything. I will get your R or whatever you want, right? Everything will be in order. Mm -hmm. I'm here today to talk about the dock. I just put all that stuff in there mm -hmm. so you have it. Yep. We're all on the same page. You can see so, what is happening is nobody could give me an answer last year. So what I think I'm gonna do as far as the dock is concerned is I'm just gonna make up a schematic. I'm gonna send it to this guy. This is where the dock's located. This is what I'm proposing to do. This is what it's constructed of. Blah, blah, blah. Give me a permit. I mean, it, it's not rocket science for any of this. No. no. I just want to understand when I came out my back door while they were running up and down. Now, I didn't and get. I don't mean to interrupt you. Does however, have to do with the retaining wall. Okay? How I, it's going to fail. But, but actually, we don't. We only have to approve it. That's okay. the building department. All right, so. So, and the building department already inspected it. They approved it. Right. So, there's no issues there. The departments and the employees there but at the time. But on my land, there's an issue. You would have to have a private property survey done because I the map. I gave it to you. It's in that. These are, these are not a private property. These are just the land lots from the clerk's office and things from taxes you would have to hire oh, someone to have have somebody okay, so come and actually survey your property um i only know two off the top of my head so you have borden and carver webby's does property surveys do we have a third one essie's um webby engineering um Bloom enterprises um i'm just going to go with that yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. But I just want to know. If you want a list, you just yeah. set that in those lines. Yeah, so with that board, like oh, your names, everything else, we have. But so, so you're going to do with that? Yep. And, and then doing things. Yeah, like, yeah. who do I go to? I end up a civil suit. Okay, so just. Because we, we have no. So you guys approved it, though. Did you get my pictures? With the, all the approved what? I'm sorry, with what? Concrete, the retaining wall. So no, the after the fact RDA was approved be, be, because it was an emergency. And the after the fact inspection, as far as like what they backfill with, that's not us. They yeah. you tell them the way that they give us the plan. We say okay, that's great. That that's the way the plan was. The trench and everything behind it that gets inspected by the building. That's not us. Yeah, that's yeah. not us. That's the yeah. building yeah. department. Yeah. I just want to look at a couple pictures with you because I do have concerns. And then, um, and then the weed, there was no brand of weed killer met um, of the use that was done and described in your letter. Yeah. But your complaints for that to determine federal law directions for use mm -hmm. are, are in the allegations regarding your shrubs is not something the town would get involved in. That's a civil suit. Um, Pest complaints go to the Department of Agricultural Resources or the DEP office in Lakeville. Um, MDAR will tell you, though, where you need to go. Septic is the Board of Health. The property line yeah. dispute, is it, it's got to be private property. It's someone who's got to survey the land. And then if your neighbors dispute what you do, they have the right to hire someone, too. That could also end up in a, Then you go to land court. Okay, so I can go to land court for my, so this. For, the, for that fence on the property line? Yeah, few feet. The retainer yeah. If it's on your property and you can prove it, yes. All right. And then and then and then you just need your RDA or your NOI to be approved through to conservation. The work you want. Yeah, yeah, but make sure okay. every single dream you have for three years is in there. Every single what? Every dream, every wish, oh, any oh, check, yeah. that everything, keep back. anything in your letter, it's make so sure it's in there. Or anything year. you might want to do, like, if, even if you want to plant a blueberry bush. Add it into your letter. Okay. And your RDA 9 
I said, do you want this in writing? And they said, no. And the same thing with Tom down at, um, they asked him about the rock that I wanted to put there and all that. Hmm. We've so, had so much overturn yeah. Yeah. And, awesome. and conservation hasn't had anyone and other departments filling in that it may, may have been an educational yeah. issue. Yeah. It I, may have been someone filling yeah. in. There may have been There's a different a board member. There was so, no town administrator to go yeah. to. So, so this retainer wall, this old one, yep. here in this picture, you probably see it better on you. As he told you it was failing and that's why he had to do it. It wasn't actually failing. It was actually done two years before he bought the house or a year before. Hi. So okay. that's but this is the we, building we have department. To move on to our rest of our agenda. So yeah, and it, we're not we're not trying to be difficult, but we need. So what do you need from me? Just you the need RDI? the you need the RDA or the NOI. Uh, the NOI. 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 So, Notice of intent for everything you might want to do in that in the buffer. Yeah, and then Peggy will put you on an agenda so you can move forward again Bring after approval. Bring plans and all that stuff. So and she'll give you the because you need an engineer. All you, you need, need to do is hire Joe. Or, or speak to Joe Webby, tell him what you want to do, and he will do the NOI and everything for you. But I can do a lot of it too. Okay. You can. Yeah, you know how to separate the fees, the wetland fees, the filing fees, everything. Yeah, because I do, do. I do all that. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'll just do. Hi. Right. Thank you for coming in. All right. Thanks. Uh, uh, the dogs are with the police department. Yep, it went on yep. those. I did, so... Nothing new on zero pine. No. Pay, pay. Well, some Pay. of the... He did put... Uh, the owner did put in a public records request for meeting minutes. Yep. And part of the, the minutes that you approved and signed tonight... You can, can go to I will can send go to him. Yep. On that will, that I, I have a question the about me meeting minutes. Only because Halifax is different than the state, and I'm a state employee, and different than different towns. So a lot of municipalities in the state, the meeting minutes have to go directly through the clerk to be approved. There's fees that have to be paid, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But Halifax doesn't do it that way? I, I can check with Cody, but as long as, as long as the meeting minutes, as long as the meeting minutes are approved, the last time I spoke to them are in an open yep. public meeting. Yep. They're considered approved. Then they become part of the public record. They become part so of the public record. Right. Um, so signatures are not necessarily required. I know that, but usually it's the clerk that handles all public records requests. That's why I was asking. Well, we get them. I believe they go. The public records requests go through the clerk. She, I believe she sends them to the town administrator, and he sends them to where they belong. Okay. Yeah, that's why I was asking because yes. a lot of times you just see. Had we already approved all those minutes in the past, we wouldn't have even heard anything about it. He would no, have just they gotten. They already been online. Right. They just weren't online for yeah. him to look at. Okay. No, I un uh, I understand that, but every town's different, so I wanted so to triple check with the town administrator. Three eighty three one Ponset is one of the ones we skipped over. I sent a letter out. I haven't heard back yet. That's okay. That's going to be the circular drive. Yep. Did um. Did it, uh, did you drive by after the last minute? Yeah, nothing's been done. I went by the other day. Uh, Actually, yeah. he had some kind of um, protection there. Yeah, because the because I think he probably sealed it or something. I don't know, but he hasn't done any more. I drive by every day. He hasn't done any additional work. Okay. But the driveway is done. It's within a, less than a foot of the yeah. of the wall. No, so. that that we've all known. But yeah. I don't drive by this one yeah, every no. day. So isn't that's why I was work. asking. Um. um so. All right, um, 111 Lake Street, um, I mailed the owner a letter asking them to come in, and, and I haven't heard anything back yet. Okay. Same mm -hmm. thing for 134 and 471 North Ponset. I mailed right. the letter out and haven't heard anything back. Okay. Yet. 63 South Street, I mailed the letter out and he called today, and he said that he's, he doesn't own the bog yet, so he hasn't filled in anything. He hasn't done any work there. They're still in the process of working out the... the um, agreement. He said that, he stated that um, the, the property, the area of the property right before South Street bends, mm -hmm. Haywood Street is on your left, yeah. no, they have brought in a lot of fill and they've changed the way the drainage and the water flow has gone. So he said he don't know who owns it and he didn't really have an address, but you just might want to take a ride by and take a look there. But he said Haywood will be on your left, and it's right at the bend on Sunday no, Street. I, oh yeah, I, I drive by you know it is? Okay. Yeah. No, it's it's okay. it it's um I drive by all the time, and it's constantly changing. But there's so much 
work over there and different flooding and highways been over there and the town of Hanson's been in that area that it's hard to determine what's town work, what's being residential work. And so um, I know one of that 63 didn't belong to highway, but if it's actually a different address, does it actually belong to anybody in public he works in towns? It's between, it's between, I can tell you what it is. He said it's between 80 or 64. The whole area is a mess. The whole area of floods, the roads going under. Oh, the, it was a big pile off the road. Yeah, I mean, the, so, it, there's, so a, there's a dip. It's, like it's, it's almost, it's almost it's lower than the swamp area. 86 yeah. and 88 South yeah. Street. It's in that area. So should um, can we ask Mr. Haywood um, if he has any work or anything going on in I that asked area? If any work is being done, done no. by 63 South Street? He said no, not by him, and he was the one that um, said that he thought they were filling in the bog. Right. Okay. He doesn't own the bog yet. He hasn't filled anything in. Oh, okay. All right. Let's uh, move on. Should. Shouldn't other than just doing a drive-by, should we do a site visit or a walk along the road or anything like that of the board members so there's a better visual? And you and I did the walk along. Yeah, we did that like a month ago. Yeah. Yeah. With the, that one day where all the flooding occurs, but where it's never it's occurred great. before. Yeah. So she thought the highway might have did something, yeah. so we just said they have to. So okay. We don't know what's causing that. No. There could have been a pipe underneath that possibly broke. I'm not okay. sure. So well, you can't, if you do a walkthrough, you won't obviously see anything. No, not, you can't. So what advice would we give them if there's a potential water main break underneath the ground or different things? So like, this is your field of expertise. It might be storage. It might have already created a sinkhole if it was a water main. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Kathy and I had talked for a brief second, I think, um, and wanted to put before the board what your thoughts are on after the fact um, RDAs, NOIs, um, work being done without conservation approval um, to possibly discuss adding to our current fee, not changing any fees there, but adding to the current fees that anyone that comes in with an after, after the fact, fact gets charged double, gets double. So instead of a regular fee, instead of seventy or instead of a fine. Yeah. I think yeah. that I think it's honestly I'm usually against all fines, but in this matter I'm very in favor of it. I think it should be triple actually. I'm on the, I agree with Ed on money for a change. No, because triple triple the damages. Like you you don't want people to go out there right. do everything, oh just pay the seventy five anyway. Right, right, right. So and that's what it is right now. It's the and if it, you double it like, okay, one fifty I think that yeah, two twenty five seems fair. I think that holds true with the way most things in this state run, like it, it's yeah. triple the damages. If you did if you didn't do the right thing the first time around. You pay triple damages, and uh, you know that's what a court of law would say. Yeah. If you were to take them to court for something, it would be you know triple yeah. damages. So I don't, I don't have a problem with that. If you want to, we need put to it on the agenda for a vote next meeting. Yeah, can, okay. Well, just so you know, it's under however you you decide to do it. I put it under discussions and actions to be taken. Okay. So that yeah. you can take action if you want to, or I can put it on for the next. Oh. One. But it's up to you. How about if I make a motion that in the future anyone who has work done and it comes to us after the fact to file, then we will triple the fee for that. I second, I second it. it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, All in favor? Aye. 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 So the last thing I just want to let say along so everybody knows is that our next meeting falls on the actual yep. 4th of July. So there will be no conservation meeting that, that evening. And so our we next fireworks. Yeah, yeah, we could. Yeah, we could. It's fireworks. The yeah. next meeting, will, conservation meeting, will be held on July 18th at 7 p.m. Okay. Um, All right. Sounds good. If uh, if we have a f like if like a gigantic load of stuff comes in before then, mm -hmm. would we be? I know it's the fourth is a holiday. Absolutely. Well, not. Forget Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. No, what? Yeah, it is. No, I, I was just asking if there should be a different day. Like, if there's like 9,000 things that come in, like that one time, like 13 well, months ago, we were here well, for like five hours. We'll have an extra long meeting on the 18th. Yeah. I'm going on vacation. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, oh, so for the, just so the board knows, the week after. Yeah, camping season, July, Steve. I'm on vacation. Okay. 
picks up the tent at 14. Um, but I'm on staycation. So if anything comes up, if there's any emergencies that come from home. And yeah, if an emergency comes up, obviously we will address it. But No, but I mean, I'm, I'm reaching for the home. I'm not going in. Uh, yeah, I have I'm going to be out of state that week. See you. Okay. Okay. I think that might create a I long a problem. I put a motion to adjourn. Well, Steve, I, make, I make a motion to adjourn. Steve, yeah. Ann and I may not be around the 18th. All so, in favor? Aye. 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 We'll discuss all that. Just. Email.